Why, hello there. So, uh, the Wizards have just announced Dungeons & Dragons 6th Edition. Or 1D&D, &D, which I guess would make it Dungeon & Dragon? Uh, either way, that's a stupid name. I'm going to keep calling it 6th Edition. Point is, they put out a reveal trailer, so I figured... I would watch the reveal trailer, do a reaction video. Reaction videos are a thing that people do uh, on YouTube. I don't usually do them personally, but, you know, there's no reason that I can't, so uh, so I'm going to. So I'll just get on my, uh, my gamer headphones, and uh, let's watch the trailer. Dungeons & Dragons is a thrilling adventure. One we play together as Dungeon Master and players but also an adventure itself. Now, we stand at the start of a new generation of Dungeons & Dragons, and today, we're going to introduce some of what's in store for us as we embark on an initiative that we call 1D&D. &D. Okay, so... That was pointlessly grandiose. It's... It's just a game, dude. It is the sixth edition of that game. It's not even... It's not a big deal, it's just take it down a notch. Growing up, I loved fantasy, but I never saw myself as the hero because I didn't think it was possible for someone who looked like me, who acted like me, who was like me to be that hero. We want to continue to reach out to folks who are interested in fantasy, who love storytelling, who enjoy spending time with their friends and creating these collective stories that they can remember for years to come. D&D's been around for 50 years, and there's very little that persists that long that becomes generational that people can really just not only share, but literally hand down to their kids. What we want to do is just add to that legacy. We did a smart thing with 5th edition by listening to the fans. We did a smart thing with 5th edition by listening to the fans because they didn't listen to the fans uh, for, you know, every previous edition. Uh, also, as I said previously, it's just too damn grandiose. Like, d d is an adventure that you can hand down to your... It's a game. It's, it, it's sitting around pretending to be an elf. Uh... I have some other thoughts, but I'll let the video play out a bit more before I get to those. What came out of that process was a system that is stable, that is well-loved, that incorporates the best elements of earlier editions. Now that we have that, <laughs> we are no longer in the position where we think of D&D &D as an edition. It's just D&D. &D because they don't want to uh, call it 6th edition because that makes you think, huh, why were there so many editions? Uh, it's like how Mortal Kombat 9 was just called Mortal Kombat, or Scream 5 was just called Scream, or Halloween H40 was just called Halloween. Uh, it has nothing to do with being, uh, this is the... Ad no, it's, it's a marketing ploy because you're going to put people off by putting a number in the thing. People are going to look at Dungeons & Dragons 6th edition or 5th edition. Remember, 5th edition didn't actually call itself 5th edition. Uh, that's going to just going to put off a more casual audience. 5th edition is a rule set that has worked for so many people and has brought so many new and exciting folks into the game. It's more important for us to continue to cultivate and respect and, and love what it is you know, th that the world has told us is working for them. The sort of change you're going to see isn't about taking anything away from you, isn't about changing any of that stuff that you love. It's much more about giving you more, giving you more options, giving you more um, choices you can make, more character types you can play, more magic spells you can cast. Basically, you know, we're very happy with the game the way it is today. We just want to build on that. We're revising the major core rule books that every player uses, the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual. Yeah, One of yeah, my you do that with every edition. Specifically, is the Dungeon Master's Guide. I'm mm. going to make some structural changes to make it more friendly to new DMs. When it comes to art for D&D, &D, it's about as versatile as our players. We want to show that the person you are can appear <laughs> in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. Okay, okay, okay. Versatile in terms of representation. Uh, not versatile in terms of artistic style, because D&D &D has just this horrible, generic art style. Uh, like, all of the top-tier role-playing games have the same generic fantasy art style. That's what 2024 holds, is this promise of getting new versions of the books that are the game you know, 
but reflect where the game is presently. Oh my god, you mean like like a new addition? Like a new addition of the game? Like the thing that guy just said that we're not talking yeah, is it's a new edition. That's, you know, literally what a new edition is. One D&D &D has three pillars and uh, one is the rule set which is built on the base of 5th edition, but updated. We're building upon the rules that have been established, the storytelling, and expanding our world and our rule system. When we say building on top of 5th edition, what we mean is that um, all the adventures and supplements that have been released in the past 10 years will still be playable with the new evolution of D&D. Then there's D&D Beyond, which is the base of our digital tools and assists for players in DM. Currently, players right. are cobbling together all kinds of different apps and websites to have a true integrated D&D &D experience. But they don't want that. They want you to get all of your D&D &D experience from them. They want to be the sole source of your role-playing game experience. Uh... I'm not going to say that's a bad or sneaky thing they're doing. It's just a thing they've been trying to do since the early 2000s. What we want to do is actually just provide all the tools that the players need to play themselves in one space. Right oh, now with how the convenient. of D&D Beyond, we've already started to dip our toe into digital. And it was a fantastic partnership that we have going. Dip our toe into digital? Because they didn't have a huge digital component to Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition. Uh, they, they did. That's kind of a big part of 4th Edition. A uh, part that I have very uh, strong opinions on, but won't get into here because that would not have anything to do with what's going on right now. But we can add more. Digital physical bundles is something that we've wanted to do for a long time, and now that D&D Beyond is part of our family, it's finally something we can do. Your content is available anywhere you want it, and you have those physical books, but you've got nice portable versions that you can access through your phone or through your tablet or through your other device. Then our future-facing aspect of this is the D&D Digital, which will become a full play space. For you to have experiences that are more immersive. Right now we're in early development of our digital experience. We can play a game, roll some dice, see the miniatures moving around in a 3D play space, um, but that's just the core of it. So basically what they're saying is they are going to finally deliver on the promises they made in fourth edition. We chose the Unreal Engine for several reasons. Reason number one, make it look dope. That's the first thing. Number two is take care of the lazy DM, because we're all lazy DMs. <laughs> ha ha ha, so relatable. I'm just like that guy. I'm a lazy DM. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you. I don't care that they used Unreal Engine. I don't uh, care why they used Unreal Engine. I don't think that matters at all in this conversation being able to access all of the tools that you need in order to get the adventure started. So we use the camera technique called tilt shift. It actually makes things look small. We want to make sure that the experience for you is that you're experiencing a miniature set. The tilt shift camera was really chosen so that people understood that this wasn't a video game, but it is a digital experience. We want to give people more minis, more options for character customization. You can actually change the features, do what you want with it. And you're going to use this miniature approach to tell stories, just like you do in physical tabletop. To have your character live. I'm transported there, but I'm not limited by the digital technology. We hmm. might give you a pre-made campaign from us that has an exciting castle or keep with a dungeon inside of it, exciting NPCs, but then you're gonna be able to take this playset, take it apart, and build your own. We're gonna have a really robust tool for you to be able to create your own dungeons. This is just the start of one D&D, and we are relying on all of you to help us out and figure out that future together. What? I can't believe they're actually expecting us to get behind one D&D. Um, so, uh, here, that, there's a thing I have thoughts on. Uh, specifically, when you have your Unreal Engine uh, virtual tabletop, uh, which requires a high-end gaming PC to be able to run from the looks of it, uh, 
why are they putting all the effort into making it a virtual representation of having miniatures on a, on a mat? It's like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People don't use miniatures on a table because that is the most uh, immersive and best way to uh, experience Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, they do it because you can't have a fully rendered 3D environment on your table. You can't have uh, little 3D models of characters that will run around. And if I'm going to, as I said, be playing on a virtual tabletop of that high of quality, uh, I, I want I want my figure to like walk when uh, I move it. I don't want to virtually pick up and move a token. I want the the character to to walk over and cast a spell and swing his sword. I want the goblins to uh, like clench their chest and like fall down dramatically when they die. I want to see the cone of fire from the dragon as it dragon breaths. Uh, or, you know what? Here, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Might be a little bit of a controversial idea. Uh, check this out. Gridless combat. You can you can do gridless combat on a virtual tabletop. Uh, up until now, there hasn't really been a need to because uh, virtual tabletops have existed primarily to serve the game. But now, now that the game seems to be targeted at serving this virtual space, that the virtual subscription service is going to be primary with the physical books being secondary, uh, there's no reason they can't have variant rules that only work on the virtual tabletop. Like, you know, you click on your, your figure or ideally your, your little guy who's standing there uh, and... You know, a, a ring comes up with your movement range. You move the figure. A ring comes up with your uh, attack range. It's a thing they could do very easily, and there is no reason for them not to do other than we are doing this exclusively to be as status quo as possible. We don't want to change anything. We don't want to do anything different because uh, that's what we do here at Wizards of the Coast. But yes, overall, do not see the point of having the most authentic virtually moving a little figurine on a map experience. You're going to be able to see, starting in August, is a steady release of these playtest packages where you'll be able to engage with key aspects of the game provide us with feedback that then we will digest, process, interpret, analyze, and then act upon. Will they though? Will they? Will they really digest, internalize, and act upon our feedback? Or will they say, well, yeah, but we know better because we're the designers. It's the second one. They're going to do the second one. Really, it's you shaping the next generation of Dungeons and & Dragons, and we want to hear exactly what you have to say. Playtesting starts today. Go to dndbeyond.com, download the playtest packet, and get ready to let us know where you'd like this next leg of the adventure to go. Oh, God. Well, that, that was the trailer. I am now going to uh, get rid of this. Well, okay, that was, uh, that was what that was. Uh, as I said at the beginning, it's stupidly grandiose. They're talking like, oh, it's Dungeons and Dragons, the adventure of a lifetime. It's, it's pretending to be an elf with your friends. Just uh, stop trying to make everything the most important thing in the world. It's not. But overall, um, aside from the virtual tabletop thing, uh, this kind of told me nothing. Uh, it told me there is going to be a 6th edition. Oh wait, no, it's not going to be a new edition, but it is going to be a new edition. But we don't want to call it an edition for marketing reasons. Uh, they're going to really try to sell you a subscription service with D&D &D Beyond and their, uh, their virtual tabletop, which I, I did a whole thing on earlier about how when you have these tools at your disposal, you have an entire virtual space. You have an entire virtual space to play your Dungeons & Dragons game in. Why do you want to limit yourself to replicating the tools that you use in your physical space 
playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it was something like Roll20, where it's just, uh, you know, little 2D tokens that you're moving around. Maybe you have some dynamic lighting effects, but that's it. That's fine. Okay, yeah, we're just, we're just replicating in-person play online. That's the goal here. But with this thing, it seems like they're building this whole thing that could be better. As I said, it could have uh, a completely new uh, combat system that is, you know, gridless. That would be fairly easy for them to do. Uh, but it seems like for some reason instead they're just trying to replicate putting miniatures on a thing. I think Is it because they want to sell you the miniatures? They want you to sell you the miniature and then like uh, you, you scan the miniature and it shows up in your virtual thing? I don't know. Um... I, I, I'm a little cynical. I'm assuming that everything is some kind of marketing scam. Uh, I'm waiting for them to announce the uh, CCG element uh, any day now. I should stop being so cynical and hard on Wizards of the Coast, but I lived through 4th edition, so I had to put up with all of that. Now, another thing is, it did seem like they were kind of saying, like, oh, we're going to make it a game for everybody. The people who couldn't see yourself as a hero before, now you can see yourself... How? They're not really explaining how d d is going to be a more open experience for more people. It's just, it's just they're saying that they're going to do it, but like not going into details. It's a very vague concept and they're being even vaguer with what they're going to do. Is vaguer a word? Eh, it's close enough to a word. So I guess that's my thoughts on the one D&D, d and 6th edition Dungeon and Dragon world reveal trailer uh they didn't really say much about what they were going to do all they said was like we're not going to change anything but it's going to be new and different uh those two things don't really go together uh the playtest materials are out i have looked over them a little bit i will be doing a video on them uh, in some point in the future, I want to, you know, go over them thoroughly, get my thoughts in order, and write them down. This is just the, I had to make a video on the new edition of Dungeons & Dragons as soon as possible for the algorithm video. Uh, that's what we do on YouTube. We make videos uh, to please the algorithm. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, uh, with special thanks to my uh, Fight and Flail Snails, Samuel Gorski, Randy Maholland, and uh, Toshirokuro came for the comedy but stayed for the nacho cheese. If you'd like to be cool like them, check out the Patreon. You can get early access to videos and fun stuff that I make for the Patreon. Uh, if you don't want to do that, that's cool too. You can still hit all the lovely buttons, like, subscribe, other videos, they are on screen. You can click on them. I am sure they are lovely videos that you will also enjoy, uh, and I will see you next time, but probably not with my awesome gamer headphones.